Hey everybody, Dan from Keystone Wood Specialties here today to talk to you about crown molding and specifically crown molding on full overlay cabinetry. What we're going to be talking about today is a rather small detail, but one that I see it installed incorrectly more than I see it installed correctly. Uh, it's actually something I call the crown mullet and I see it all over the place. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about one, what it is, two, why I think we've been installing it wrong, and then three, how to install it correctly. So what is a crown mullet? A crown mullet is when your crown molding has a different reveal on the end than it has on the face. Looking at this cabinet, you can see that this is a full overlay cabinet with crown molding that is disproportionate on the face and on the end. On the end, you can see all of the crown molding and on the face, because it's set back to the face of the cabinet rather than the face of the door, you can see that you get a very different reveal. Kind of like a mullet has a different reveal in the front and the back. Same, similarly, this has uh, a disproportionate effect, which is what we call the crown mullet. So how do we install it the right way? Well, there's several schools of thought, and I'm gonna to talk to you about two ways that I've found that work. And I'm gonna tell you one way that I've seen attempted that doesn't work. The method that doesn't work is the idea that you can just fix the problem by taking a piece of baseboard, inverting it, and then installing that first, and then putting your crown molding on top of that. So what that does is that will actually bring your molding front, which helps that problem, but if your problem is proportion, it's also bringing the end out. If you put it on the front and the end, and the problem was the end sticks out more, then you're just moving the problem, you're not fixing the problem. So that's one method I've seen that doesn't work. The two methods I've seen that do work would be to put some blocking only where the doors are to bring it out so that when you install your crown, your crown molding is being installed flush with the face of the door and then it's still being installed flush with the face at the end, which will give you a correct look once it's all completed. Another method is using crown molding that has what's called a heel or a return. So with this, this molding, instead of being nailed to the face of the cabinet or the end of the cabinet, this is installed either by screwing from underneath or by screwing or nailing from above. And with this type of molding, because it has that return, you can pull the molding forward or backward however you need to. So on the end, with that same piece of molding, you can install it like that. And then at the front, where you need it to be forward with the face of the door, you can pull it forward there as well. So you don't need any additional blocking if you use the crown molding with the heel. So why does this happen so much? Well, I have a theory as to why it happens, and I think it starts with we being so used to framed cabinetry, specifically inset framed cabinetry. When you have framed inset cabinets, the, the, when it's inset, the door is actually inset inside the face frame, and they're actually on the same plane and the door isn't going to interfere with the reveal of the crown. So you can just take your crown molding and install it right on the face of the face frame, and the door does not affect how that looks at all. Uh, next up is a construction type I call lipped construction, where the door actually has typically a 3 8 by 3 8 lip or rabbit around the edges. And that is kind of in between overlay and inset where part of the door is inside the opening and part of the door is overlaying the face frame. Not by much though. It's usually only a quarter of an inch overlay. So that too also does not affect the reveal of the crown. Um, so you can still see the crown is not affected visually by the door because it's so close to being inset. From there, we have what I call partial overlay. It's where the door is completely in front of the face frame, but it's not covering the entire face frame. So with a partial overlay, you're kind of in between. There are some cases where you will have to install your crown molding differently, 
But in many cases, even if you have a partial overlay, quarter of an inch, half inch, maybe even more, you may not have to change how you install your crown. You might still be able to install it like you typically would with an inset cabinet, just nailing it right to the face of the face frame. But that depends a little bit on the door edge, how much of an overlay you have, and also what type of crown you're using. But then we end up with full overlay. Uh, you have this on framed and frameless cabinetry. But full overlay is when the door is completely in front of the face frame and it is covering the entire face frame. So with that, if you install your crown molding and you've got these wall cabinets that are up 84 inches high off the floor and you're looking at it from an angle, that door is now going to be blocking the crown molding. And without pulling it forward, it's going to create a visually disruptive effect from the front to the end where there is no door and it's not impeded visually. So you want to make that consistent and that's why we pull the crown molding forward. Hopefully you better understand how to install crown molding on full overlay cabinets. For more tips and tricks, visit our YouTube page or our website, keystonewood.com.